following video was produced by Zuzu Truck. It is being distributed to GMC Truck and Chevrolet medium duty dealers to assist you in the diagnosis of the W4 automatic transmission. The purpose of this videotape is to familiarize you with the processes necessary to diagnose the electromagnetic transmission quickly and accurately. Although some of the methods of diagnosis you will see may be familiar to you, this transmission has some unique features which will require special diagnostic skills. Features of the electromagnetic transmission include electronic control shifting, lockup torque converter, economy and power mode, overdrive, and self-diagnosis. We will now take you through a problem step by step. The customer reports there is no converter lockup. Before tests are made to verify the problem, a visual inspection of the vehicle must be made. Before tilting the cab, always check for loose objects to prevent windshield damage and always install a locking pin. The transmission oil cooler should be checked for obstructions. It is located at the lower front of the radiator. Look for oil leaks at the output shaft seal, front pump seal, the wiring harness seal, and the speedometer O-ring seal. Don't forget to check the transmission vent tube for blockage or crimping. A blocked or crimped vent tube can cause excessive pressure buildup and force oil past the seals. It may even push the oil out the dipstick tube. Next, the condition of the transmission fluid should be checked for evidence of varnish, grit, and burnt odor. Any of these would indicate that the transmission has been overheated and that possible internal damage may have occurred. Our mechanic is not checking transmission oil level. Remember, proper fluid level is to be checked after running the vehicle a minimum of 10 minutes. Check the engine oil level and coolant level before starting the engine. After the visual inspection, lower and lock the cabin position. To start the engine, set the handbrake, apply the service brakes, place the selector lever in park. Turn the key to the on position and observe the glow plug indicator light. When the light goes off, crank the engine. Do not accelerate the engine for a minimum of 30 seconds to protect the turbocharger. With the economy switch in the normal or off position, the light will remain on for approximately 10 seconds, then go out. If the light begins to flash off and on, a trouble code has been recorded in the transmission ATCU unit. The electromagnetic transmission has two shift modes, economy and a power mode. The power mode should be selected when the truck is fully loaded. The power mode allows the engine to develop full torque before a two to three upshift occurs. The economy mode is selected for maximum fuel economy. In this mode, the transmission will have a quick two to three shift. This shift mode should be used when the truck is empty or lightly loaded. A rocker switch located on the right side of the instrument panel allows the driver to select either mode of operation. An indicator light will come on when the economy mode is selected. The electromatic transmission incorporates an electronically controlled overdrive. The electric overdrive switch is located on the gear shift selector. The indicator light is incorporated in the instrument panel. When the overdrive light is lit, the transmission has three speeds. When the overdrive light is not lit, the transmission has four speeds, fourth being overdrive. An electromatic diagnosis form is available through your service department and should be completed. When used correctly, this form is an excellent tool designed to shorten and clarify your diagnosis of the electromatic transmission. The information gathered so far is now entered on the diagnosis form. 
At this point, a check of the transmission sensors and solenoids using the onboard computer self-diagnosis mode will be performed. To initiate the self-diagnosis process, place the starter switch in the off position. Put the shift selector in the D range and set the economy switch to the normal position. Next, turn the starter key to the on position. Place the shift selector in second. Set the switch to the economy position. Place the shift selector in first. Set the economy switch to the normal position. Fully depress the accelerator pedal. The flashing economy light will be used as a monitor readout. For a normal readout, the light will flash one-tenth of a second ten consecutive times. If a problem exists in one of the sensors or solenoids, the flash rate for the component will be six-tenths of a second long. In other words, the longer duration flash indicates a problem area. You will note that the first consecutive flash is longer in duration. By referring to the diagnosis pattern chart in the service manual, we see that a trouble code has been recorded for the transmission speed sensor or its associated wiring. We'll begin our diagnosis by checking the resistance of the vehicle speed sensor. A digital multimeter adjusted to read resistance is connected between terminals 1 and 2. The resistance reading should have been approximately 504 to 616 ohms. A high resistance reading indicates a defective sensor. If the resistance is within limits, then a voltage check needs to be performed to make sure a defective ACTU has not caused the failure of the sensor. However, before installing any electrical component, always test it. Check the resistance of the new item. The resistance should read between 504 and 616 ohms. Removing the engine stop fuse number 11 for a minimum of 10 seconds will erase the trouble code memory. Be sure the fluid level is inside the H range for the hot check. A cold check can be performed if the vehicle has been shut down for more than three hours. After starting the engine, follow the same procedures as a hot check, except the fluid level will be between the C and the H mark. To verify our repair of the speed sensor, we will refer to the service manual for testing procedures. In this case, we must raise the rear wheels and safely secure the vehicle. Voltage testing may be performed at the component harness. A voltage of over 1, but less than 5 volts, should be present at 15 miles an hour. No voltage is present when the speed drops to zero. In addition, it may be necessary to check the source voltage at the ATCU terminal. Voltage to the ATCU, but not at the component harness, would indicate an open in the harness. After checking the electrical system of the automatic transmission, additional testing may be required to confirm other conditions that may be experienced such as the transmission does not go into converter lockup. The stall test allows you to check the transmission for internal leakage and the one-way clutch for slippage. The torque converter performance can also be evaluated. The stall test results together with the road test results will identify transmission components requiring servicing or adjustment. The line pressure test checks the oil pump and control valve pressure regulator valve function. In addition, oil leaks can also be detected. Let's review the stall test procedures. Check the level of the engine coolant, the engine oil, and the automatic transmission fluid. Replenish if required. Start the engine and allow it to idle until the engine coolant temperature reaches 70 to 80 degrees centigrade or 158 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Connect a tachometer to the engine. Set the parking brake. Place chocks at the front and rear of each wheel. Hold the brake pedal down as far as it will go. Place the selector in the D range. Gradually push the accelerator pedal to the floor. The throttle valve will fully open. Note the engine speed at which the tachometer needle stabilizes. Release the accelerator pedal. Place the selector in the N range. Run the engine at 1200 RPMs for one minute. This will cool the transmission fluid. Repeat for the 2, 1, and R ranges. Having reviewed the stall test procedures, let's go over the procedures of checking line pressure. Check the level of the engine coolant, 
the engine oil, and the automatic transmission fluid. Replenish if required. Start the engine and allow it to idle until the engine coolant temperature reaches 70 to 80 degrees centigrade or 158 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove the pressure detection plug at the bottom of the converter housing. Connect a pressure gauge to the pressure detection plug hole. Set the parking brake. Place chocks at the front and rear of each wheel. Hold the brake pedal down as far as it will go. Place the selector in the D range. Note the pressure gauge reading with the engine idling. Gradually push the accelerator pedal to the floor. The throttle valve will fully open. Note the pressure gauge reading with the accelerator pedal fully depressed. Release the accelerator pedal. Place the selector in the N range. Run the engine at 1200 RPMs for one minute. This will cool the transmission fluid. As we have demonstrated, the self-diagnosis system will help you determine if the electronic controls are working properly on the electromatic transmission. When other difficulties are encountered, the conventional pressure and stall test will aid in your diagnosis.